It's a really nice watch with some pros and cons, so what really matters to a potential consumer? I'm a big old geek. I like digging deep into the weeds on consumer electronics. On a product like this, though, what matters and what doesn't? Spending a little time with the Pixel Watch, thanks to the folks at Team Pixel, they sent this my way to take on a test drive and share some thoughts, but there's been no influence over my use of the product or reporting on the product or any of the video you're about to watch. Getting some of the conclusion out of the way at the top of this, I think you should buy it. I think you should buy it if you want a smaller watch with smart notifications and app support, and you've used Fitbit for your health tracking. That's what Google is claiming this device can do, and it does all that really well. I'm not entirely sure what other commentary really matters. I'm not sure what comparisons really matter. I don't know that it matters if I tell you I don't think the Pixel Watch is really for me, because I think a lot of people are going to like this watch. For those folks who will get good use out of this gadget, none of the traditional tech reviewer gotchas are gonna matter. Saying the insides of the watch are ugly in a teardown video, that's not gonna matter to an end user. But it has an older chip inside from Samsung. And yet, the performance is great. Oh, the screen is a little small. It was built to be a little small. So the people who want a small watch will enjoy that. And honestly, in practical operation, it's really not that much different than my Apple Watch or my Tick Watch E3. And I really don't think it matters that it's a first generation product from Google. You know, that, that one's often just peppered in as some light FUD, you know, the fear, uncertainty, doubt, like it's somehow incomplete or broken, even though it's a good effort for a first generation, you don't, you don't want to be stuck being a beta tester, right? And the folks complaining about proprietary mounts for wrist straps are hilarious because that was never really an issue with the Apple Watch and there's already pretty decent support for straps on the Pixel Watch. All that rambling about tech commentary, what do I think matters on this watch? I've been struggling with this because I like the watch, but I'm not really going to keep wearing it as my daily driver. Figuring out the why of that has been kind of tricky. The battery is definitely a big deal for me. It's why I don't wear a Fossil, a Tick Watch E3, or an Apple Watch. I've been spoiled by some really nice fitness trackers and the better battery life on Samsung and Tick Watch Pro watches. I can get over two complete days of use on a Tick Watch Pro. I like that a lot. When we talk about ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem doesn't really matter. I don't know that the Samsung ecosystem is the direct competitor, even other Wear watches. Probably not it. My biggest practical concern for folks who are considering a Pixel Watch are those people who are coming to this from owning a Fitbit. Going from a week of battery to a day of battery is, that's a really big jump. Again, the unfair comparison that doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> the Apple Watch is good while I'm wearing it. I do like this watch, but I have to support it more. I have to manage charging it more. It doesn't really blend into the background of my daily life as much because I have to worry about its battery about as much as I worry about my phone's battery sometimes more. I received the LTE version of the Pixel Watch, but I haven't really bothered trying to set that up. You know, even just using the GPS can take a chunk out of the daily runtime when I'm tracking a workout. I'm also more than a little bummed about the charger. It's a magnetic wireless charger, which unsurprisingly does not play nice with an Apple Watch charger. But unlike a Galaxy Watch, the Pixel Watch also does not seem to like any of my other wireless chargers for phones, which means we're buying an expensive puck with no cable replacement, and that will eventually just be more expensive e-waste. I wrote up a longer editorial on that on somegadgetguy.com if you want the full rant about accessories and e-waste. I also worry about the Pixel Watch's design to a point. I think it's a fine, looking device, everyone's going to have their own preferences for a wearable. It's got to fit your style. But in the grand scheme of things, little rectangles or little circles on your wrist, that's a personal preference. You're going to answer that, not me. My main concern is no side protection and curved glass. I wish the steel sides moved up higher onto the screen bezels. I ended up buying a rinky case, which I also reviewed on my home site, somegadgetguy.com. I'm personally not into the Fitbit lifestyle, but using that as a companion app has been little different than using a Tick Watch or an Amazfit. It seems like a great service for those folks who are motivated by using it. So it's nice to see the Fitbit collection of products grow 
to add a, a proper smart smartwatch. I'm not too concerned about some of the current omissions. I do wish it had automatic workout tracking. I like that on other wearables because I often forget to just push go when I'm otherwise ready for a workout. I'm focused on the workout, not managing my gadgets. I hope that can come in a future update, but I don't think it's much of a deal breaker as the watch exists today. And you might be able to tell by how soft I've gotten around the midsection over the last couple of years that I'm also not a social workout or collaborative workout kind of guy, but I have to believe that the Fitbit app will better support friend challenges in the future. It just seems like a software tool that Google would be interested in supporting here. And of course, blood oxygen should be in a watch like this. And I'm not the hardcore fitness buff, but we've been been dealing with a disease over the last couple of years that, that likes to wreak havoc on our lungs, being able to test blood ox is a very nice peace of mind feature to have. Outside of all that, I feel most of this just comes down to those personal preferences which are the hardest to highlight in some kind of YouTube review. The watch does what it claims to do. You just have to pay attention to what Google claimed the product could do. And I really want to highlight this because I think it's a critical option in Android land where the functionality of the Pixel Watch is not tied to a specific phone. I'm not sorry. I'll never buy a Samsung watch if I can't use the ECG feature when it's paired to a non-Samsung phone. I already own an Apple Watch, which can only work with iPhones. I, I can't even pair this to an iPad or a Mac and use that as a primary host device. If I could use an iPad mini as a standalone phone and pair it to accessories like a watch, short story long, I don't need that kind of device ecosystem lock-in in an Android accessory. I think that's been one of the frustrating ideas behind the commentary on this watch. It's something I even had to reflect on in my own criticisms. The more I think about it, the more I don't want there to be consumer lock-in on features. I was one of those asking early on, you know, what does the combination of Pixel phone and a Pixel watch do that can't be done with some other combination of watch or phone? Maybe it's okay that there isn't anything seriously proprietary? Maybe that's fine. All right, we're wrapping this all up, I promise. Uh, Fossil is just starting to add Wear OS 3 to their portfolio. I'm really anxious to see what Mobvoi can do with Wear OS 3 on tick watches. All of these products, I wouldn't really make a strong recommendation of any two watches to the same consumer. They're each different enough that you should be able to kind of zero in on what features matter to you. If you're confident you're only ever going to use Samsung phones, a Samsung watch makes sense. Galaxy Watch 5 is a great buy for the price if you're already rocking a Samsung phone. If you want those rich notifications in some of the smarter apps, but you also want better battery life, I'd probably lean TicWatch Pro. If you like Fitbit apps and services, if you want phone agnostic ECG, or you just want your smartwatch support to come directly from the company that makes the operating system for the watch, then no other solution is really going to scratch that itch but a Pixel Watch. I feel this bears repeating. No product is perfect. All gadgets have some pros and cons. Specifically here, the Pixel Watch can certainly use a little more polish and a few more updates, but it launches as something kind of special. Even though it's called a Pixel Watch, it's not locked down to only work with Pixel phones. I think that's a consumer benefit. That's a lifestyle feature I don't think gets enough recognition. I'll definitely be spending a little more time with the Pixel Watch, probably write up some of my experiences, definitely share some thoughts on my weekly podcast, the SGGQA podcast every Monday morning. So stay tuned, we've got more to share and I'm really curious to see how Google is going to update this watch over time. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been phenomenal. If you're going to the home site, somegadgetguide.com, shopping a little merch, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest tech pals in the universe. True story. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.